Hey, we're with Keith Shelton, longtime friend of Road Trail Run here at Skechers, and there's a lot of exciting stuff from Skechers. Go ahead, Keith. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna take our Hyperburst franchise, and we're gonna start to, to make it more special for the daily training side and on the race day side. So the first one that we're gonna talk about on the daily training side, this is gonna be our Hyperburst Ice. This is gonna be a more plush, uh, almost a dual density type Hyperburst. It's gonna be super plush underfoot, but you're gonna have a lot more stability with the outer carrier. We're gonna beef up the amount of Goodyear rubber, so you're gonna have better durability. You'll also notice we've got a little bit more of a luggy pattern in the forefoot, so you're gonna have more versatility with this shoe. You can go off, uh, off the, uh, the sidewalk with it. We'll have this in two versions with the Hyperburst Ice. We'll have an update to the Ride. This is the Ride 11. And then we're gonna have our Max Road 6. The Max Road 6 is gonna be the, the, the Max Cushioning version. Uh, this is where we're gonna get the premium cushioning. Both shoes will feature that carbon infused training plate, so you're going to have increased forefoot stability and a really beautiful snappy toe off on both of these shoes. Now Keith, tell us, uh, I, we see a kind of a, a light showing through, how is that midsole put together? Yeah, so the inside of it is our Hyperburst 2.0, it's, a, it's a, a, a higher expansion rate Hyperburst, it's going to be softer, it's going to be more plush experience to the runner, and then what we do is we have a firmer Hyperburst 1.0 carrier, and that's what's going to provide the stability in the shoe. Very cool, and then when are they available in approximate uh, retail prices? Yep, so well? the, the Ride 11 is going to be available on 415, and it's going to retail for 120. Oh, nice price. And then price. The, the Max Road uh, 6 is going to retail or, or launch on 515, and that's going to be at 140. And uh, what is the stack height of the of uh, the Max Road and the Ride 11? Uh, the Max Road is going to be at 38 and 32 Ooh. in the forefoot. And then we're going to go down four millimeters to 34 and 28 on the Ride 11. And the weight, it, you told us the weight earlier, pretty amazing. For yeah, both, such big both shoes. shoes are going to be well under nine ounces. Uh, part of the increase in weight is because we've increased the stack heights, mm -hmm. so you're getting more foam. We've also increased the amount of Goodyear rubber. And then adding in that super critical hyperburst arch fit footbed on the inside is going to give you more foam on the inside. And then we've increased the, uh, the, the weight of the upper. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit more of a substantial upper. It's going to help more with locking the foot end, uh, but still being very flexible and breathable. Excellent. Now, what do we? What's this bright thing over here? Wow. All right, so I think next we know what up, that is. Next up is the Speed Beast. So we talked about the second derivation of Hyperburst was to create a material called Hyperburst Pro. This is going to be more specific to that race day up-tempo type application. Uh, unlike the original Hyperburst, which is an EVA based, the Hyperburst Pro is going to be a TPU based. Ah. It's 100% pure TPU, and the process is a little different, uh, Sam. So you know an original Hyperburst, we started with the baby part mm -hmm. yeah. and we put it through the supercritical foaming process. With Hyperburst Pro, we actually fill the mold with the TPU pellets, and we put the mold through the supercritical foaming process. Okay. So when we open the mold, this midsole part comes out finished. What kind of stack height do we have here? Uh, stack height is going to be 40 and 36. 40, 36. Yep. And the weight? The weight is going to come in just under 9 ounces. Okay. okay. And the objective of this shoe is a little different than other companies that position their super shoes. One of the things you'll notice is from the footprint, as you get to the later miles, we're going to really be going after more of that 250 to 330 mm -hmm. type marathoner, yep. that A, B corral yep. type runner. You'll notice we're going to be more uh, supportive for heel strikers and for midfoot strikers, a wider base. So yep. as your form starts to break down later in the marathon, you're going to start to move back where you're contacting yep. the ground. I certainly do. Now you're going to have a lot more stability. Uh, this is going to help with injury prevention. It's going to help keep your form through the end of the race. And we've got lots of rubber too. That a lot more the... rubber than we've had in the the past, typically on the Speed Freak and the Speed Elite, we've really stripped out as much yep. weight as we possibly could. Because we're not necessarily going after that tip of the spear yep. runner, which by the way, Edward Cesarek as a tip yep. of the spear runner loves this shoe, yep. okay. he actually uses it on track workouts okay. as well. Uh, so it definitely works for that tip of the spear, but because you're going to have more rubber, you're going to have more durability. Uh, again, so a lot of people are using these as training, you know, up-tempo yep. speed workout training shoes. So having that, now when you're going to spend a higher price, you're going to get more versatility, you're going to get more use out of it rather than just on and race day. And the retail day. and uh, availability. And, and the, let's talk a teeny bit about the upper, too. Yep. Yeah, so as we move up to finish up, we'll have that carbon-infused H-plate. So this is meant to be the stiff version. This is a stiffer plate. 
it's still got some flex. It I does. like that. And yep. it's about that rolling motion from midfoot yep. to toe yep. off. It's going to give you more forefoot stability. It's going to give you a snappy toe off in this shoe. It's going to rock really beautifully. As we move to the upper, it's going to be a hyper mono polyester blend. Uh, that's going to keep the, uh, the upper nice and mm -hmm. soft on the foot. Something new that we've pioneered on the Razor 4 and on the Speed Beast is this print dye process. Most uh, graphics on running shoes are done by sublimation printing. Right. Sublimation printing uses very high heat and lots of water. Mm -hmm. This new print dye process uses virtually no water oh, uh, and it doesn't have a high heat. So what ends up happening is it keeps that base mesh yep. much more soft, much more supple, doesn't, but we can still get those vivid it, colors. Sort of exactly. melt it. We can it, get the vivid yep. colors and graphics on there. Very uh, nice. But because it is a race day shoe, there's still no proper heel counter. Yep. So much like Speed Elite, Speed Freaks. Yep. Uh, and then we'll have very minimal on the upper. So just enough in the tongue to keep the lace pressure down, but very, very is lightweight upper. there in the tongue? There, there is no gusset. What okay. we like to do is we have that, that lace loop which sure. helps keep it yep. in place. And then on the inside, we'll have that hyperburst uh, arch fit uh, footbed. So Excellent. it's going to be a thinner version because it's race day. We'll have a six millimeter footbed on the training side, yep. and we'll have a four millimeter on the race day side. And then uh, price and about when will we see this beauty? This is going to launch uh, early next year, so I'd expect it around three one three fifteen. Currently the price is two fifty, but Sam, we're working hard to get it down to two hundred just for you. Hey, that would be great. Thank yep. you very much, Keith. As yep, always, you. fantastic, Sketchers. I have a silly question.